What happens when you cross Tony Hawk's graffiti mode with paintball and sea creatures? None other than Nintendo's first ever shooting game. But I'm sure you're wondering if Splatoon is worth buying brand new or at all. So let's talk about the good, the bad, and what's to come. First things first, the interface. Everything is accessible with literally one button on the gamepad, which is awesome. You can jump from the shops to multiplayer to Octo Valley in a matter of seconds. For those who like to explore and look around, you can also walk around the plaza and get to wherever you want to go that way. It's also the only way to talk to people and order their gear too, which brings us to the next topic, customization. Although the shops take a couple of days before they have new items, I've already collected quite a large number of gear in two weeks and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. The new abilities you get when leveling up your gear are also chosen at random, so someone else you play with could technically have the same gear with different abilities, which you could then order in the plaza. With abilities being generated at random, technically the number of gear available in the game is infinite, so have fun collectors! But in all seriousness, the gear abilities really add a lot of depth considering there are 24 different types of bonuses or perks your character could have. When you get splatted online, you can see exactly what gear, abilities, and weapons your opponents are using, and maybe tweak your build for the next round if need be. Speaking of multiplayer, every time you turn on the game, the Squid Sisters will let you know what stages are available at that time. Which is great, but when you just want to grind Octo Valley, or you're going to go right into multiplayer where the stages are clearly displayed, then it kind of becomes unnecessary. You can also check the stages on the gamepad, but I digress. The controls feel really simple on the gamepad, probably due to the simplistic button layout. You can play with motion controls, which some players find very effective, or turn them off and adjust the sensitivity to a comfortable amount. You can also invert the x-axis and the y-axis if that's what you prefer. Unfortunately, the only thing you can't do is use any other controller but the gamepad. The Pro Controller, for instance, would be amazing for this game. Having the map on the gamepad and your teammates to super jump to is convenient, but you could also just keep the gamepad somewhere visible while you use the Pro Controller, for example. The L button also remains unused during the game, so in a Pro Controller button layout, it would be great as a super jump toggle, and then you could press A, B, X, or Y to jump to your teammates or your spawn point. But this is just me being picky. Let's talk about the actual multiplayer now. Having a shooting game where the main goal isn't to kill the enemy is pretty refreshing. If your team doesn't cover the ground with ink, you're going to lose, simple as that. No amount of kills will save you. This allows for some interesting strategies and game plans that will constantly change depending on what weapons and gear you and your opponents have. If you're playing alone with random players, you're also going to need to adjust your playstyle and maybe even your weapon choice depending on what your teammates have and how they're using it. You'll need to level up in order to unlock new weapons to buy, so you might end up playing with one weapon you really like for quite some time, but the gear abilities and stage rotation constantly keep the multiplayer fresh. The stages are all a really great size, allowing for tons of action as well as opportunities to get behind the enemy team and ink the areas closer to their spawn. Certain stages with large areas are great for rollers and high rate of fire weapons, but there are also stages with lots of narrow passages and high perches that long range weapons do very well on. With 5 stages at the moment, there's quite a bit of variety which can almost force you to switch up your gear and weapons depending on the two maps in play. Unfortunately, with each map having a 50% chance of being selected, sometimes you play the same stage 4 or 5 times in a row, so it would be great if there was a voting feature before the game started. However, with people having their own personal preferences, you might still end up playing the same map 5 times in a row, so it's really not a big deal. The big downside about multiplayer at the moment is no built-in voice chat at all. Although you can use computer software or a cell phone app to chat with your friends while you play, when you're just flying solo, not being able to communicate with your team can be very frustrating. Sometimes everyone will be trying to splat the enemy instead of inking the ground and you'll fall way behind. Or you're just getting destroyed and need to work together but can't do anything without communicating a plan. Even a lobby voice chat like Smash Brothers could be beneficial, but there's always hope for future updates. These updates will be free, mind you, and include almost twice as many stages as well as new weapons and game modes. You'll also be able to have private matches, which will then make external voice calls with your team extremely effective since you won't be getting placed on random sides every match. The Splatoon Direct also mentioned that this summer won't be the only time updates happen, so there's no telling how much multiplayer content there is in store for us. Well, let's talk about the offline multiplayer for a second. It has one game mode, just one. A race to pop balloons where splatting your enemy results in them losing balloons. Whoever gets the 30 balloons first or has the most when the five minute timer runs out is the winner. Now this game mode can get pretty intense when you and a friend are evenly matched and really going at it, but with only five maps to choose from, a limited weapon selection, and just the one game type, overall it feels dry. 
I really didn't want to make any Call of Duty comparisons in this review, but even the zombies or aliens or dinosaurs or whatever it is game mode has different variations and ways to play it. However, I don't doubt that as the game gets updated, so will the offline multiplayer, with new game mode stages and weapons. Enough about multiplayer though, Octo Valley is the story mode of Splatoon where you embark on a quest to save the great Zapfish. It has 5 little hub worlds and 32 levels including the boss fights, but overall the difficulty is pretty tame. You'd expect things to get a bit harder towards the end of the game, but the levels still remain just as short and simple. In fact, some levels even sort of repeat later in the game but with different enemies and challenges, which I thought was quite lazily done. Personally, I was hoping for a variety of puzzles within the levels requiring you to use ink in clever ways, but for the most part, everything is very self-explanatory. I think the issue is with me though and not with the game itself. As an older, more experienced gamer, I breezed through the single player mode, but I don't think Splatoon was intended for this type of gamer. It's likely that the game, or at least Octo Valley, was intended for a much younger or rookie gamer audience. But with that being said, it was still fun to play through and find all the scrolls and could always get updates along with the other areas of the game in the future. Overall, I give Splatoon an 8 out of 10. It's Nintendo's first original shooter and it is crazy fun. I've never been too fond of the campaign modes in shooting games, so what's really important to me is an enjoyable online multiplayer that I'll want to play long after the game is released. Although it only has 5 multiplayer maps, free updates guarantee that everyone will have more stages to play on in the future. So unlike games with map packs that you have to pay for, your likelihood of finding a match will stay the same since everyone has the new update. Free downloadable content for an online shooter? Yes please! And with the addition of private 4 on 4 matches, event organizers like myself will be able to put together Splatoon LAN tournaments which is going to be absolutely insane! Yes, the single player is kind of short and simple, the offline multiplayer is pretty basic, and you have to use the gamepad for almost everything, but the online multiplayer is amazing! And shoutouts to free DLC! If you like this review, hit that subscribe button and follow Console Creature on Twitter. We do unboxing videos and reviews for all kinds of tech as well. Not to mention playthroughs, hype gameplays, and even live streams. Head on over to consolecreatures.com to learn more. I'm Meme Juice Mass Central, thanks for watching and happy splatting!